Okay, there we are. Uh, in today's lesson, I'd like to give you an overview of the English history um, throughout the Renaissance, the Civil War, and the Restoration. Uh, you probably remember that uh, the English Church, uh, which had become the Anglican Church after the Act of Supremacy uh, passed by King Henry VIII, uh, in the English Church we can distinguish uh, among three uh, groups, the so-called Episcopalians, the Presbyterians, and the Puritans. The Episcopalians, uh, from the Greek word Episcopos, uh, which should mean supervisor, or we might also translate into bishop. Uh, um, these Episcopalians were um, four um, kings, who were also the head of the church. So basically, what Henry VIII had stated, the King of England was both the King of England and the head of the Anglican Church. On the other side of the question, we find the Presbyterians, from the Greek word presbyus, which means old man, elderly man, um, and these uh, were for uh, a church divided into communities. Communities. Each community um, was to be guided by a group of uh, um, wise men, uh, elderly, that's why Presbyterians, elderly and wise men. Among the Presbyterians, uh, uh, there were the Puritans. The Puritans were led by Oliver Cromwell. Uh, the Puritans uh, can be associated uh, um, directly uh, with uh, uh, Martin Luther and with uh, um, John Calvin. Um, they uh, were radical. Puritans were radical. They wanted a profound transformation of the church into a pure institution. They felt that the church was corrupt and uh, um, they uh, advocated for uh, a pure church. They were led by Oliver Cromwell, who by the way uh, also led the civil war which brought to the execution of Charles I. Charles I was executed uh, um, and so um, England ceased to be a monarchy for uh, 20 years, uh, between um, 1640 and 1660. His son, uh, Charles II, had to um, find a, a refuge in France, so he escaped to France. And Oliver Cromwell became the Lord Protector of the English Commonwealth, which should uh, be translated uh, um, into res publica from Latin, so uh, an alternative to monarchy. Okay, um, so this is uh, some kind of uh, um, historical background. Uh, um, this uh, period, uh, this historical period, which saw the only um, the only uh, phase uh, in uh, the British, in the English history, uh, when uh, England was not a real monarchy, uh, ended when uh, uh, Oliver Cromwell died and his son, Richard Cromwell, was unable to guide the nation. Uh, that's why uh, it was the English themselves who um, asked um, Charles II to come back from France and to restore um, the monarchy. That's why this period ends with the restoration of the monarchy. And what about the Puritans? What about the Puritans who had been led by Oliver Cromwell? Uh, they had to. Uh, they had to flee. They had to uh, find a way out. Uh, um, and they went uh, to America, to the uh, British colonies in America, and they were literally saved by the uh, American Indian.
can um, remember, celebrate this this moment when the Indians, the original inhabitants of uh, Massachusetts, saved the Pilgrim Fathers. So the Pilgrim Fathers uh, on uh, on the famous uh, ship Mayflower um, were the Puritans, the English Puritans who uh, had to escape from England. Why? Because they were in danger, and so was John Milton. John Milton was in danger when uh, the English monarchy was restored, because she had supported Oliver Cromwell. Um, well, John Milton uh, um, led uh, some kind of a double life, a first life, a first public political life in which she was basically a politician. She was, uh, um, she was the um, state secretary of Oliver Cromwell, uh, uh, some kind of minister for foreign affairs, uh, because he could, uh, um, he could fluently understand and speak uh, French, Spanish, Italian, uh, as he had also studied uh, Greek and Latin, so she had uh, a huge education. John Milton was uh, able to read uh, Homer, um, Virgil, uh, Dante, um, Ariosto, um, Tasso, all the uh, classical uh, um, and modern Greek, Latin and Italian authors. Um, First, he uh, only wrote uh, uh, political writings, uh, uh, that is, pamphlets. Pamphlets. What, what is a pamphlet? A pamphlet is a publication, um, usually short, uh, and usually um, with uh, a thesis to defend. Um, what about Areopagitica? Areopagitica is... Uh, uh, is a, a famous pamphlet written by um, John Milton. It is uh, completely called Areopagitica, a speech for the liberty of unlicensed printing to the Parliament of England. So what is it about? It is about the freedom of the press. The name Areopagitica comes from Areopagus, um, Areos Pagos, the hill of Ares, which was a hill in Athens, uh, next to the Athenian Acropolis, uh, um, were the, the council of ancient Athens uh, gathered. So it, it was a place where uh, the people in Athens uh, made their decision. And um, um, Milton uh, gave a speech, gave a speech for the liberty of unlicensed printing. Unlicensed printing. What does this mean? Uh, Milton defended the right of anyone to uh, publish whatever they thought, whatever they um, wanted to express to the rest of the population without having to ask for a license. So Milton was for unlicensed printing. Well, licensed printing, the opposite of unlicensed printing, is the synonym for censorship, for inquisition. Uh, inquisitors uh, uh, were those, inquisitors just like censors, were those who had to go through a book, to read a book, examine the book uh, uh, deeply and uh, state uh, if this book was, uh, um, if, if this book was written according to uh, orthodoxy, what is orthodoxy? What the government, the king, the government, the parliament, uh, the church uh, thought was the right uh, um, opinion, uh, the right uh, uh, judgment about something. Well, John Milton defended the right uh, 
of any kind of opinion to be published. Why is it like that? Because he says a book is the life blood of a master spirit. He who destroys a good book kills reason itself because reason is uh, uh, the human uh, ability of uh, distinguishing between what is right and what is wrong what is good and what is bad so milton seems to say that if you stop wrong books wrong ideas wrong opinions from being published from being shared with other people you stop people humans your community from learning how to distinguish the good from the evil right and wrong in fact milton talks about promiscuous reading that is a reading which has not been scrutinized uh, examined uh, judged promiscuous reading is necessary to the constituting of human nature in fact she says give me the liberty to know to utter to utter means to say to speak the liberty to know to speak to argue argue from the word argue we find argument okay a discourse an exchange of ideas well milton says that that this exchange of ideas um, is to be done freely according to conscience above all liberties according to conscience but milton seems to be saying how can my conscience learn how to behave learn how to tell uh, the right from the wrong if uh, i don't have the opportunity of reading uh, what you would call a bad book okay a wrong book only if i read wrong books can i learn what a bad book is what a wrong idea is in fact he says these are quotations from uh, areopagitica good and evil we know in the field of this world grow up together inseparably inseparably it is difficult to separate good from evil what what is milton talking about she's talking about chaos this word is chaos uh, the knowledge of good and evil as two twins cleaving together we need to get to learn good and evil evil and good because good and evil are like two twin brothers who live together and this this one apple one apple tasted what is this apple it is the forbidden fruit that eve decided to taste going against god's order eve disobeyed god eve disobeyed god but if eve had not disobeyed and together with her also adam if adam and eve had not disobeyed god they would never have learned 
what evil is, what sin is. So, if uh, you want to know what good is about, uh, you need to learn what is not good, that is, what is evil. You need to know good and evil side by side. I'd like you to uh, notice uh, that uh, John Milton uh, also found, visited, that is, he met Galileo. And we know that Galileo is a hero uh, as regards uh, this idea of defending uh, what is uh, defined as uh, not orthodox. Uh, Galileo was a prisoner to the Inquisition for thinking in astronomy, otherwise than the Franciscan and Dominican licensers thought. So we had some uh, friars, Franciscan, the Franciscan and Dominican licensers who could only read the Bible, analyze the Bible, scrutinize what was published according to the Bible. Well, these friars, okay, these uh, theologians uh, only knew the Bible and they wanted to judge uh, science, that is what Galileo had just discovered, and they said that what Galileo was trying to publish was against, was against doctrine. So it had to be hidden. What Galileo had discovered had to be hidden, destroyed. No one was supposed to know what Galileo Galilei had found out. That is, it is wrong to, uh, to think that the Earth is the center of the universe. Okay? Okay, so this was Areopagitica. It is a pamphlet written by John Milton in the first phase of his, uh, of his life. When, uh, uh, when Oliver Cromwell ruled over the English Commonwealth as the Lord Protector, and at that time, uh, John Milton um, only wrote pamphlets, and not only about the freedom of the press, the freedom of uh, uh, publishing, of printing and publishing any kind of book uh, without having to ask for a license. So this is important. The the freedom, the freedom of uh, unlicensed printing. This is very important. Uh, not only she wrote about uh, the freedom of the press, she also uh, expressed his ideas about uh, um, marriage. Uh, you have to know that Milton uh, got married three times. Uh, one of his marriages only lasted the three weeks. He was for divorce. He was not against divorce. He, he thought that people should have the right of uh, divorcing someone if uh, after the marriage they had found out that uh, uh, it was impossible for them to live together. If they realize, if, if a married couple, even a just married couple, realized that uh, it was a mistake, according to Milton, we need to have the right of uh, divorcing someone. Okay? So uh, she wrote the doctrine and discipline of divorce. This is another, another writing of she's uh, belonging to this uh, first period. 
but uh, we will uh, we will see that uh, uh, John Milton also also uh, wrote uh, another uh, another huge huge work of art which is uh, uh, the Paradise Lost which on the other hand belongs to the second period when uh, when she was uh, somehow um, exiled not in the literary sense uh, uh, he um, he was not uh, sent uh, away from uh, from England but um, he had to somehow retire to his home uh, when Charles II came back from France uh, so when the monarchy the English monarchy was restored um, after the death of uh, Richard Cromwell and uh, Milton was in danger. The only reason why uh, he did not die or he um, did not have to find a way out uh, in America like the, the rest of the Puritans had to do, the, the so-called Pilgrim Fathers, uh, was first because he had uh, um, very influential friends. Uh, uh, he was really appreciated in England for, for his education uh, uh, because, uh, as, I, as I told you before, uh, he was a master in, uh, uh, in Greek, Latin, uh, Italian languages. He read uh, uh, Virgil's uh, Aeneid uh, in Latin or um, he read Homer directly in Greek. He read uh, Dante. He read La Divina Commedia uh, really easily uh, and um, when uh, um, when uh, she uh, had to retire to his uh, home uh, after the restoration of the monarchy she had gotten completely blind she lost his uh, eyesight uh, um, very probably because of uh, a glaucoma which she uh, could not cure properly, so she lost the eyesight. Um, just like Galileo, uh, just like Galileo, even Galileo in the, in the second part of his life got blind and she had to dictate to his daughters um, the, the famous uh, um, Dialogo Sopra i Massimi Sistemi, which was later published in, uh, in Denmark, in uh, Sweden, in the north of Europe, uh, far away from uh, censorship, far away from uh, uh, the Catholic Inquisition. So Galileo had suffered censorship. That's why it was uh, um, a terrific meeting, this meeting between uh, John Milton and uh, Galileo Galilei. Um, because uh, also Cromwell got blind and he also had to dictate his daughter uh, the later words of uh, his life, which, uh, which were properly literary works. He wrote uh, The Paradise Lost, The Paradise Regained, uh, uh, which are epic poems, uh, uh, epic poems uh, written uh, in the Italian style. He, he knew who Ariosto, Ludovico Ariosto, and uh, Torquato Tasso were, and he, um, most of all, he knew uh, Dante, he knew uh, Dante's comedy. Um, the Iliad, uh, the Odyssey, written by Homer, and she wanted to write a similar, a similar epic poem as uh, uh, huge as Iliad or Odyssey. Um, at first, uh, he thought of writing um, about uh, the Knights of King Arthur. His first idea was writing uh, according to the so-called Arthurian cycle, that is another collection of uh, legends, of myths about King Arthur. 
But then uh, um, she realized that she wanted to do something even uh, uh, higher. So she thought of a possible uh, uh, topic, a possible subject, and she thought, what is higher, greater, more important than the creation of man, of Adam and Eve, the battle of good versus evil, that is, uh, the angels uh, who had stayed loyal, faithful to God, and the so-called rebel angels, named Satan, okay? So, she wrote the Paradise Lost, which is this huge epic poem in 12 books. It's written in 12 books. Um, it is an epic poem. Uh, it is written in uh, Ionic pentameter, um, you know, 